because God decided to give us something more important than equality, and that's freedom. You have to live with the consequences. I'm not going to bail you out. <laughs> Don't take my money. That's not going to help you. Take my value. When I look at the parable of the talents, Matthew 25, you know, when the master left, and there's a video I've done, which is, you know, the, the, the Bible story that made me millions, which is a controversial topic in itself. But, um, but I just looked at that as a parable of the talents because when the master is leaving, he's giving talents according to the, to the servants, according to their ability. And the question I've always asked myself, Rabbi, after reading that parable is, am I a one talent servant? Am I a two talent servant? Am I a four talent servant? What is my ability? And that's my prayer is how do I make sure I'm always the servant that's increasing his ability, increasing his talent. But with that being said, it, I mean, is God, it, 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 in your understanding, is God somebody that will never want to see the poor? Because it, when I read the Bible and I see all these different things, why is there such large income inequality today? Uh, or, or, or the illusion of it? Yeah. Um, so uh, Deuteronomy chapter 15 has two verses, um, uh, only a few verses apart. One of them says that um, uh, you must always give the poor because um, uh, they'll always be around. Okay. And wow. The other one in, the, in chapter 15 of Deuteronomy says uh, basically that if you follow the edicts of, uh, of, of the Lord, there will be no poor among you. Well, you can't have it both ways. Okay. Either there'll be no poor or there'll always be poor, but make up your mind. Okay. And ancient Jewish wisdom explains these two verses in Deuteronomy 15 um, very simply, saying, look, uh, if you, if you um, follow these systems and principles and these timeless truths, you will never be poor. You've got nothing to worry about. But always know that if you look over one shoulder, you'll see people with more than you. And if you look over the other shoulder, you'll see people with less than you. That's a reality. Because God created people very differently from animals. And that is the, uh, the whole lesson of Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, which is that people and animals are completely different. The fact is that um, if a zookeeper um, is you know, time to feed the elephants. He, he gives every elephant of the same size the same amount of food because equality works with animals. <laughs> uh, farmers feeding the cows, all the cows get the same amount of food roughly. Sure. But you can't do that with people. Why is that? Because God decided to give us something more important than equality, and that's freedom. And when you have freedom, you have freedom to excel and you have freedom to goof off and do nothing. Wow. And the only deal God made with us is it's your life. You can do what you like. The only thing you have to know is you have to live with the consequences. I'm mm. not going to bail you out. <laughs> there it is. And so, um, uh, you know, I know this is sort of politically incorrect because it sort of sounds as if I'm blaming the victim, but uh, today, uh, poverty is not um, the result of anything external that anybody is doing to anybody else. It's a result of bad habits, bad behavior, and bad culture. That's all. So when they pour $4 trillion into the economy, uh, when 40% of all wealth, 40% of all money is printed in the United States of America was created in the last 12 months because of COVID, and they're pouring all this money to help lift up the bottom, your thoughts on it? Yeah. It's not going to do it. It's not going to do it. going to do it. Uh, you want to, you know, you take a, a poor guy, a guy who's got no money, you want to you help him. I would say to him, don't take my money. That's not going to help you. Take my values. Ooh. Okay. I can, and I'll tell you what to do. Um, first of all, you've got to learn the, the soft skills. You've got to be able to be subservient. You've got to stop making your machoism uh, your most important characteristic. You've got to be able to learn how to serve a boss, an employer, or a customer. And that's not easy. It goes against everything you've been acculturated with since you were a child. 
And then you're going to have to learn a skill. Then you're going to have to learn to show up, not at eight o'clock on Monday morning, but at 10 minutes to eight Monday morning. And you're going to stay not till five o'clock, but till 10 past five. And you're going to do more than is expected of you. And number two, do not have children before you married. Number three, make sure you learn how to talk. Speak whatever language, whatever country you're in, speak that language. Do not speak a bastardized version of it. Huh. Because otherwise you can't communicate effectively. You turn people off. All you've got to do is these things, and I promise you, you're on the financial escalator. Now, it's not they're not going to be easy, but that's all that's going to put you on the financial escalator. And it's not the immediate result that people are looking for today. That's correct, yes. And I, mean, I mean, you want an immediate result, there's probably nothing quicker than robbing a convenience store. That's right. Oh, gosh. <laughs>